A fireplace has always served as a gathering place for community affairs, romantic dinners, and family events. But often the expense and complexity associated with building a new fireplace can deter many potential consumers. Not anymore. Direct vent gas fireplaces are an economical and convenient way to add the beauty of a fireplace to any house. The unique venting process allows you to vent vertically through the roof or horizontally through an outside wall. This video is designed to take the qualified installer safely through the process of installing a direct vent gas fireplace. So, let's get started. Dan, good to see you Hi, again. Hi, Bob. Good to see you again. You know, there are a lot of unique features about this product. And could you tell us a little bit about that? Sure, Bob. One of the nicest features of a direct vent fireplace is the ease of operation. Since it's operated by a wall switch or a remote control, you can turn it on and off whenever you like, so you can enjoy the fireplace as little or as much as you like. Also, they're a very efficient heat, and they provide a nice source of heat and light during a power failure. And you know, one thing we want to emphasize is that these should only be installed by a qualified technician. Absolutely. What are some of the factors that you have to consider when you locate one of the fireplaces? Some of the considerations are is where are the framing and the ceiling joists going to be? Also, you want the fireplace typically to be the centerpiece of the room, so it's located there. Other than that, direct vent fireplaces can go just about anywhere. This fireplace can be used with zero clearance on both the back and the side, which saves a great deal of space. What other clearances should be allowed? Well, Bob, there's a couple things you want to consider. Okay. You want to make sure that you don't have any interference with the ceiling joists. Okay. If you have a perpendicular combustible sidewall, you want to maintain clearance to that. Also, the mantle height and depth needs to be considered. On the venting itself, if you're going vertical like we are today, it's one inch all the way around the venting. If you're going horizontal through the wall, it's two inches on the top, one inch on the bottom, and one inch on the sides. Well, let's get started. Let's do it. I guess the first thing is to unpack. So everything is in here that we need to make this installation complete. Yes, Bob. There are some nice options that you can add to the fireplace. You can add a fan to help move the warm air around. You can add a series of remote controls. And you can put some nice trim kits and decorative doors on the outside of the fireplace. So Dan, I guess we remove the packaging first before we can get it into position. Okay, let's All do right, it. Good. Okay. Good, good. All right. Great, that wasn't bad at all. Nope, she's in the opening. The framing looks good. We want to level it to make sure okay. that the product is level so we don't have any issues with the surround materials. And then we'll secure it into the framing. Terrific. So let's see how this one turned out. Well, Bob, it doesn't happen very often, but this one's perfect. Okay, good. But what if it's not? What do we do next? What you want to do then, Bob, is you want to get some standard shims and shim the fireplace so that it's plumb and level. Okay, good. We can do that. All right, let's attach it to the framing now. Let's take uh, our drywall screws. Show me the ropes. All righty. Let's take a standard drywall screw. One of the nice features of the direct vent is the full-length nailing flanges. Once the product is in place and we secure it to the framing, it can't move because a lot of other trades come into contact with our fireplace after we leave okay, the job site. Okay, good, good. So we're going to make sure it's good and secure. That looks easy enough. I think I can handle that. And this is an important step, Bob, because a lot of trades come into contact with our fireplace after we leave the job, and we want it to stay level and plumb. Success on the first one. You know, what's really and truly incredible to me is that everything, everything is included in this package. That's true, Bob. The logs are unitized. They're already set up for you. The uh, gas train assembly is ready to go. That makes it extremely convenient. So, I just have one more to go. That does it. So what's next? Now we're going to start on the venting, Bob. The first piece we're going to use is a vertical restrictor. And we use this to slow down the airflow so you have a nice mellow flame pattern. Okay. We'll just drop that into the flue. Then we'll install the 45 degree elbow. Okay. Get your tabs. Tabs go into the little slots. Slide it on so it's secure, and then twist it to lock it. Well, that looks pretty simple. Yes, Bob, it really is. With the uh, unique snap lock design that we have, twist lock, there's no sealant and no fasteners required to get a good solid connection to the fireplace. So what's next on the agenda? Now we start running the pipe straight up, Bob. You know, Dan, we talk about this direct vent terminology. What exactly does that mean? It's a good question, Bob. 
Direct vents use what we call a coaxial vent, which means that you have an inner pipe and an outer pipe. The hot flue gases that are generated by the fire exit through the flue, and then the fresh air to supply the fire, fire comes in from the outer. And so these all connect in what way? Well, we use a twist lock design, Bob, and let me show you how that works. Okay. If you could hold that for sure. me. You can see that there's some grooves in the pipe and there's a little dimple here. We line those okay. up, and then we just twist the pipe to lock it. That's it. Yeah, pretty ingenious. Now, there are several varieties of sizes. Why do we have so many different varieties? Well, Bob, let's say that we have to go around a floor truss in this run. Okay. We're going to use an elbow and then the various lengths of pipe to complete that offset and return to okay. get around the obstruction. Okay. So what length do you typically start the project with? Well, in this case, Bob, we've got a straight shot all the way up. So we'll use the longest length that we have, okay. and that's the four-footer. Okay. Can I give you a hand with that? Yes, please. Just like that. That's it. So now we just build from here on up? That's right. So Dan, what happens if you can't go straight up with the uh, vent pipe? What do you do then? Well, that's the nice thing about a direct vent, Bob. You can go horizontally through an outside wall. Okay. We've prepared an 11 and a half by 11 and a half inch hole, and we're going to put a fire stop, a wall fire stop on the inside. Okay, good. Now, all of this sounds great, but what if everything just doesn't line up right? What do you do then? That happens sometimes too, Bob, and the option there is to use what we call flex venting. Okay. This venting has the same connection method as the rigid, but it's flexible pipe and it's expandable. Oh, wow. Wow, that's really cool. So you can hit any hole with this. Excellent. Okay, we're ready to install the inside wall fire stop. If we were using a round cap, Bob, we'd okay. have a wall fire stop on the outside wall also. But we're using a square cap today, so we'll just install the wall fire stop on the Very outside. Very good. Very good. Can you hold that for me? Sure. I'll get you set up here. I guess that goes... Right yeah. like that. Perfect. Okay. All right. There we go. We can install our pipe, and then we'll go on the outside and put on our termination. So the fireplace is installed. We have the vent pipe in place. And now we're doing the termination cap, is that right? That's right, Bob. Okay. Before we install that, I want to make a couple of points. If this house was going to be clad with vinyl siding, sure. there's an additional piece that goes, sheet metal piece that goes on the outside here called a vinyl si uh, siding standoff. Okay. okay. But this is normal construction. We'll, ju we'll go ahead and just put the termination right on here. Great. So if you'll slide that on for me, you can see that it says top right here. That's hot. All right. It goes to the top. Wow, look at that. There you go. I'm going to go ahead and throw a level on this, Bob. So okay. We can get a real nice installation here. Can you move that to the left a little bit? Yeah, I sure can. Perfect. All right. There we go. Now we'll just install our screws. So we have all the vent pipe sections in place, all the way up the chase to the very top. Now what? Well, Bob, what we've got now is we have our technicians up on the roof, and they're installing the flashing. Okay. They're going to install the storm collar around the outside of the pipe. That'll keep the water out. They'll caulk that. Install the termination on top of the pipe, and we're done on the roof. That's great. So it's complete. Not yet. We've got one more thing to do inside, Bob. Let's go check okay. it out. Okay. 
Bob, the standard way to operate the fireplace is with a wall switch. Okay. The direct vents come from the factory with 12 feet of wire already attached to the valve Great. and protruding out the side of the fireplace. I've wrapped the wire around this stud right here. It's a good location for the switch. It's close to the product, but it's out of view. And this tells the electrician where to hang his box oh, for his wall switch. That's terrific. Well, the fireplace is installed. The, the vent pipe is in place. The termination cap is complete. Now what? Well, Bob, we're all done for today. We'll come back after the doors are locked and the flooring is done and all the finish work is done and we'll set up the fireplace and pre-burn it for the homeowner. Terrific. Dan, thank you very much. Thanks, Bob.